Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's lovely to see you here in St. Helier. And I'm about to turn things on their head as far as our economy is concerned and the economy of the other islands within the Channel Islands. Since I've uh, joined this process, I didn't make any promises whatsoever. I've been a man of action. I got in touch with Google in America, which had um, on uh, all the islands the word UK. Now, let me explain to you why I've had that removed. First of all, it was a potential terrorist threat. And secondly, to the ignorant, a backdoor to the UK. I've already achieved that. That was done. It was done not as I put in the 500 words, as simply as that. I argued an awful lot, but I got it done, and within two days, it was completed. Secondly, police headquarters, I went down to see them last week and demanded they change the website, which reads, oh, don't laugh, I'm quite serious, and I've managed to do this as well, jerseypolice.co.uk, another potential terrorist ta target, and again, an ignorance to the ignorant, a backdoor to the UK. We've come to a compromise on this when the police headquarters moves to Green Street because of the paraphernalia with uh, leaflets and everything else, and I don't want people wasting their money. The website will now read jerseypolice.gov.je. That was an agreement I got this morning. So that will actually be uh, taking place when they move into the new building. Now, there's been a lot of things going on. I've actually completed a multi-million pound deal, and I did this on the 23rd of, well, it was in fact before the 23rd of last month. I was actually asked to go to America, but I said the people of Jersey come first, and so I refused. I could not go until much later. Now, I've been talking to you about a film, the Purpose Built Film Steward and the Film Commission. We're talking about a multi-million pound deal here, which I have now completed for the Channel Islands. All the Channel Islands will benefit from this, and I'm going to read you the list of investors that are involved in this very, very shortly. What this is going to do, it's going to give um, the flexibility to filmmakers and uh, directors the choice of coming to this island, hiring the equipment from the purpose-built studio, and then going to all the five islands to film. The, the actual studio itself, the purpose built studio, will be used to, to actually house the equipment. That's not, it's not going to be used as a studio as such. But that's, where it, that's what's going to happen. So, you see, when you bring stuff over from, say, uh, America and places like that, it costs a fortune. Now, let me give you the list very, very quickly. Here's the investors. Simon Cowell, David Hasselhoff, John Travolta, Denzel Washington, Jackie Chan, in brackets, John and Sonsay, because I'm also a black belt karate first and master, and James Cameron. Thank you, Stevie. Okay, Thank and you, Stevie. Uh, I can't say any more, can I? Thank you very much. And Stevie Ocean. Thank you. Well, Chris, let's answer your question. Uh, my first objective, um, if I'm elected, is to get a proper immigration policy. And I mean, with a criteria laid out that people that come into this island are going to be beneficial and not going to be dead wood or have criminal records or anything like that. That's what we need so we can move forward. I'm going to use tax and diplomacy to achieve that. Uh, the Council of Ministers are actually starting to follow me on social media. So that gives you some idea of what's going on now. This started yesterday. And uh, I'm very surprised to see quite a few people that have decided to follow me. And uh, they're worried. I think the chief officers are getting ready to leave because I said I was going to get them all and send them off to the Ecros. And uh, Alan McLean, watch out, because I want that £200,000 back. And I mean, I want it back for you. And I intend to get it back. He's not going to get away with it. You know, he gave that money away, your money, without a written contract or anything. He just thought he could do it because Bill Nye was going to be in the movie. And Bill Nye wasn't going to be in the movie. That guy was a con man. I knew it because I'm a member of equity and was privy to the information, but he wouldn't listen. He thought he knew better. Now he's going to pay the price and he is going to give it back in full. Thank you. On the point of divorce, <laughs> I've never been divorced, but I've been engaged 10 times, so I haven't reached that point <laughs> myself. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? Uh, all I can say on that point is that I've seen people, friends, 
you know, even showbiz pals that have gone through hell where the lawyers have ripped them apart and they've literally stripped them of everything they've had. I think there's got to be reform on all counts and uh, it's got to be done as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Um, my question is to do with Your name the, first, please, sir. Uh, Darius Pierce. Thank you. My question is to do with the disciplinary procedure for civil servants. Currently, when a member of the public makes a complaint against an individual civil servant, the matter is dealt with by their immediate superior, who will therefore share responsibility for the action. Do the panel believe that it would be better to um, have some sort of public oversight of the disciplinary procedure for civil servants, or should the government be allowed to continue as uh, Ming the Merciless. Thank you. Well, let's answer your question first, Darius. Accountability, and as far as discipline is concerned, if somebody does something wrong, they should actually pay for it. I've, you know, my idea of this would actually, obviously, because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's your money out there, uh, why not put them in the stocks and humiliate them with sponges and, and uh, cabbages alike? Because for the simple reason, if we did that and humiliated them to the extent we could, they wouldn't do it again, would they? Would they? Wouldn't, would they? You do it to them once, they'll never do it again. Right, on the point of mental health, I'm an expert on this, a real expert. Yeah, listen very carefully to what I've got to say. Now, first of all, up at um, St. Saviour's Hospital, there used to be two wards up there. They were APUs, acute psychiatric units. Unfortunately, those wards are now closed. There is an APU at the General Hospital, which is called Belcrute, the same thing. Now, if you go in of your own accord, you volunteer to go in, then you're looked after and you can see people and people can come and see you. If you get sectioned for 90 days under the Mental Health Act, it's a different matter entirely. You'll go up in handcuffs, the police will take you up there, as they did at St Saviour's Hospital, and you will not see anybody for 90 days. The treatment you will receive is a bit like one flew, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. What do you mean rubbish? I've actually been in, I've actually been in there myself for six months. It's not wrong. No, it's not. It's quite right, sir. Uh, please, uh, could you, uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Fine. Right, it's not rubbish. Anyway, as far as uh, the, the situation is concerned, there are uh, people called CPNs that look after uh, people with mental health issues within the community, and they will definitely, if they get a chance, uh, support them and get them to see a psychiatrist so they can be treated. Thank you very much. My name is Tina Palmer. Um, I'd like to ask a question. There's been a lot of talk about immigration, population, but um, what about the investment in our young people? What about Jersey having um, a more robust skills and career strategy that's fit for purpose for the island going forward? Hello. Um, your, I'm your, name, Clark. your name, please. Daniel Clark. Daniel, thank you. Do any, are any of you um, or do you receive financial benefit from any employment in uh, private business? Uh, I know one of the users is a development manager for Baker and uh, partners um, financially or whatever. Or do you benefit from the tax system? And how would you um, develop that or attract yourself from that to, be, to uh, truly represent the working class? Stevie Ocean. Thank you, Daniel. Let's ask your question first of all. First of all, I get paid when I work, and if I don't work, I don't get paid. It's as simple as that. Now, as far as the rest of it's concerned, I didn't get a chance to mention about the Film Commission to you. The Film Commission, I will be chairman and non-executive director. There is no money involved at all for me. Also, all members of the Film Commission will be non-executive directors as well. I'm not talking about the investors, I'm actually talking about people from each of the islands that I choose to actually represent each island within the Commission. Now, other things that have happened, and uh, I didn't get a chance to tell you about this. I'm actually, I'm actually been approached by Universal Pictures to do all to audition. Now, if I get this role, listen very carefully, and I'm elected, hang on Daniel, and if I'm elected, and if I get this role, I am going to donate my salary from the states to local charities. Well, what would you expect me to do? Uh, I've got to talk on. about myself. Order, order. I've just explained to you. I've just explained to you what the position is and that uh, there isn't any money 
as far as uh, no hidden money. If yeah. you want to ask, uh, if you, Daniel, if you want to I'm not moonlighting at all. It doesn't work like that, If Daniel. you want to explore this further, perhaps you could speak to Stevie at the end. Yeah, Thank okay. You. you can speak to me afterwards because, I mean, everything goes for equity in the UK, in London, okay? Okay, right, Tina. Sorry about this. Right, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, a, a scheme should be set up at Highlands College covering as many different jobs as possible and apprenticeships. Now, they've got the facilities up there to do it. I actually think that uh, the more uh, abilities people have got, the, better, the more strings to their bow, the better they'll be. Right, yeah, two things. The constable has de decided that he wants to take the, the payment for this silly steam clock down there and dump it on us. And this is a guy that's charging us 300 odd quid for non-existent parking spaces. And then the second part is leading back to the guy that brought the parking things in to begin with. That numpty Eddie Noel, right? Yeah. And that is, that is the biggest numpty lot. Now the thing is, the reason I want to ask this is because if I vote for you, I don't want another Eddie Noel in. How do I know you're not getting another Eddie Noel? There we are. <laughs> Now, on Eddie Knoll. Oh. Eddie Knoll stood up to stand for election for TTS Minister, and you can find the record of this on the State's Assembly website. He said, elect me as TTS Minister, and I will increase the number of people working in my department. <laughs> Two weeks later, he started drafting up his plans to sack hundreds of our, most, our, our best value for money and valued manual workers who are doing fantastic work yeah, for yeah. our communities. He broke his promise, so whilst we're selling the steam clock to Guernsey, I think we should sell Eddie Knoll to Guernsey as well. Too bloody <laughs> Stevie Ocean. Right, well I don't know much about the steam clock situation, but I think it's a disgusting situation. Um, now, I'll get on to Eddie Noel and what I want to do to him. <laughs> and I can assure you what I want to do to him. First of all, I want to vote a no confidence in the House to have him removed from his position. He has, as uh, Sam has said, lost the jobs of very, very good friends of mine right across the board, bought in people that are incompetent. They are lowering the standards of the jobs that they're doing, and I think it's disgusting. So that's going to be sorted out. And as far as anything else is concerned, I want to organise a charity night where we get Eddie Knoll to eat as much sea lettuce as possible <laughs> and raise as much money as possible, and then maybe he'll bloody get rid of it. Thank you. Thank you.